Okay, let's have a look at another example of the Chinese remainder theorem. We did it last time with the numbers 2 and 3, so let's do it this time with the numbers 3 and 4. So the idea is that we're going to look at all the possible values mod 3 and all the possible values mod 4, and that's going to tell us about all your possible values mod 12. So if we do mod 12 here, what possible things can you be mod 12? You can be 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, or 11. Okay, now what can you be mod 3? Well, if you're 0 mod 12, then you're definitely 0 mod 3, right? And then we get 1, 2. If you're 3 mod 12, then you're going to be 0 mod 3 again. 1, 2, so 0, 1, 2, 0, 1, 2. Okay, now let's have a look at what you could possibly be mod 4. Well, if you're 0 mod 12, then you're definitely 0 mod 4. And then we get 1, 2, and 3. And then if you're 4 mod 12, you're definitely going to be 0 again mod 4. So we get 0, 1, 2, 3, 0, 1, 2, 3. So now, if we look at these pairs, I can cover up this top row. And if I told you what you are mod 3 together with what you are mod 4, that completely pins down what you have to be mod 12. Because if you look at these repeating patterns, we don't get back to the same thing ever again. The first time we would get there would be at, at 12 again, because we'd get a 0 and a 0. But 12 is just the same as that. So 0 and 0 only appears once there. 1 and 1 only appears once. And you can check that those are all the possible pairs, and that's all the times that they appear. So in that case, we could solve any simultaneous equation mod these two things. So if I said to you, solve the equation x is congruent to 1 mod 3, and x is congruent to, I don't know, 2 mod 4, you know that that gives you a solution mod 12, because all you have to do is say, okay, supposing you're 1 mod 3 and 2 mod 4, there it is. It means you have to be 10 mod 12. So the solution to this simultaneous equation is that x has to be congruent to 10 mod 12. Now, note, this only works because these two numbers are co-prime. Co-prime means that their highest common factor is 1. The highest common factor is 1. So now let's have a look at one where the highest common factor is not 1 and see what happens. So let's try doing 4 and 6. So let's try 4 and 6, the highest common factor. Okay, so now, if we tried doing it by 4 times 6, we'd get 24. So let's just have a look at mod 24. There's 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. Okay, I'm running out of space, but that's okay because secretly I know what's going to happen, which is I'm not going to need to go all the way up to 24. So let's have a look. Mod 4, we get 0, 1, 2, 3, because if you're 0, mod 24, that means you're divisible by 24, which surely means you're divisible by 4, right? 0, 1, 2, 3, 0, 1, 2, 3, 0, 1, 2, 3, 0. And now let's have a look. Mod 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 0, 1, 2, 3. I'm doing it completely wrong. I need to go up to 5. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 0, 1. Oh, look. The pattern.
pattern started repeating itself, didn't it? Because I've got a zero, zero here, which was the same as the zero, zero here. And as soon as I hit that zero, zero again, the pattern is going to be exactly the same. So in fact, I only needed to go up to 12 because they only had to go up to 12 before the pattern would start repeating itself. And why is that true? It's because the lowest common multiple of these two numbers is 12. So the lowest common multiple is 12. And there's no, there's no coincidence here about the relationship between the numbers because the lowest common multiple is nothing but multiplying the two numbers together and then dividing by the highest common factor. So if we call this number A and that number B, then the lowest common multiple of A and B is nothing but A times B divided by the highest common factor of A and B. So if the highest common factor is 1, then we know that the lowest common multiple, you just have to multiply them together. And this is very related to how long it takes this pattern to repeat itself. Because if your highest common factor is 1, that means you get no, you get no um, uh, accidental repeating patterns. You have to go all the way around as many times as it takes, which is A times B times, before you get back to the same place again. Whereas, so that's saying the first time that you get a number that's divisible by A and B is just by doing A times B, right? So A times B always is divisible by A times B, but if, by A and B, but if your highest common factor isn't one, you get to kind of cheat a little bit. You will hit another number that's divisible by both of them earlier. How much earlier? Well, this much earlier. So here we hit it halfway through the pattern because the highest common factor was two. So in this case, it means that your pairs of numbers mod 4 and mod 6 pin you down not just mod 24, but they actually pin you down mod 12. So you might say to yourself, but wait, there's something funny going on here, because if I've got four possible numbers that I can be mod 4, and I've got six possible numbers that I can be mod 6, doesn't that mean that there are 24 possible combinations of numbers? So why does the pattern start repeating itself after 12? Well, if you have a look at these pairs, you'll see that some pairs of numbers can't ever possibly happen. So only 12 of the numbers are actually possible, whereas the other 12 of them aren't possible. So can you see, see if you can see some pairs of numbers that aren't possible. Right, so if we have a look at what numbers go with zero, the only numbers that can possibly go with zero are zero, four, and two, right? So you can't have zero and one. So let's write this down. For example, if we have x is congruent to zero mod four, and x is congruent to one, mod 6. That's not possible. This has no solutions, which should be obvious, because if you're 0 mod 4, you're even. And if you're 1 mod 6, then you're odd, right? So you can't be simultaneously odd and even. So there are no possible solutions to this thing. So in general, that's going to be true. That's always going to be true. You can only have both of you being odd or both of you being even, which is why we only get half of the combinations, because half of the combinations will be one odd and one even, and that's never going to work. <laughs>